All right. Happy Monday. So uh, uh, we've got a decent, uh, we have a decent uh, agenda here. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, a few announcements. Uh, it is a federal holiday on Wednesday in the United States. It's Veterans Day. So there's a number of folks that are going to be out. Uh, if, uh, if you haven't booked time off, please consider it. It is a holiday. Uh, that weekly sinks they resumed starting this past week so they're going to continue and they're on an they're on an alternating schedule one that's more apac friendly which is this week and then they go back to in the end they're going to bounce back and forth so if you're interested in attending uh, uh that you can find those uh, on the secure stage calendar um and the last announcement is um office hours backlog refinement office hours i'm canceling them those this week and i'm beginning the process to transition those to open it up uh, to be more of a field enablement type of exercise um, uh, so that there's a place for uh, folks to get live support. Um, and that doesn't preclude us from having conversations about refining issues there. Just know that we're broadening the scope of it uh, intentionally. So uh, those are the announcements. And uh, Ross, you've got first, though this is, looks to be largely handled. Yeah, I was just going to say I added the added the item, but Zach uh, took care of it. If he has anything he wants to add, but not much. Uh, yeah, don't need to add anything really other than it's it's released. Um, a nice community contribution. So um, this this actually did, um, and I need to create this issue, but when I was looking at the Mava subcode. Um, and I know, Sakat, you're working on the integration test, but we don't have unit tests either. So that's something that needs to be added, which I'm not sure if that's captured anywhere in a issue. Um, but that's on my agenda, so I'm just going to create that after this meeting. There's an epic for test coverage, and there are issues per analyzer. So that's the one to find, and that's the one to, so it's a new issue in that epic, and I'll add it as a to-do to go hunting for it, unless somebody beats me to it. Okay. Yeah, so in the last uh, release, I tried to add the integration test. Uh, there are some issues with running a separate service, so I couldn't make it running. So I'll try it later then we can easily add the integration test for this. <clears throat> and th there's, an, there's an issue, I think uh, Zach already mentioned in, uh, in that MR uh, for tracking the integration test. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if there is a, an issue for, for unit tests, but it's something we're you know, very aware of and uh, one of those accepted risks of releasing it under the beta so but yes definitely needs to be taken okay i'll move on all right this is my best interpret impersonation of taylor uh so just giving everybody a heads up on 13 7 priorities uh two things they shouldn't i don't think they're surprises number one uh better licensing for SAS and secret detection. This is a decomposition uh, story because right now licensing is for the category. It's not for the individual features that make up the category. Uh, so that should enable a lot of things if we were to start decomposing that and make things more granular. Uh, the second one, mono repo support. And we talked in office hours last week about how there's two classes of mono repos. It's the one where there's multiple discrete projects in a repository of the same framework or language. Uh, that we need to improve because there's a lot. Uh, there's there's a lot of deals that are either suddenly in the pipeline or have always been in the pipeline that are that are being escalated at this point. So, and I see Taylor put the planning issue or link the planning issue for next release. So, any questions? Do we know who is the? MR coach. Yes. Who? He, he lives in Missouri or, or, or he lives in my Kansas City. So Ross is up. So, yeah. It's at the top Declare. of the document, too. Mm -hmm. I was looking my one on one with Thomas's doc for that. That's right. It's in this doc. Okay.
I'm going to try to find a spot to keep this documented in the handbook. Uh, there's there's a bit of there's a bit of a pattern that's developing for who's chairing the sub department wide retrospectives uh, that uh, that I think works, and so we'll uh, I'll, I'll try to do that here as well. Okay, all right. Last one from me. Um, so I have OKRs. Um, I have not written them yet because there's been a lot going on, uh, both uh, from a well countrywide context as well as within GitLab itself. Uh, so, but in any case, the uh, thematically, there's two of them that I'm looking at. Number one, dog fooding. Uh, this is something that we've talked obliquely about before, but effectively forking our upstream dependencies and turning them on so that we're using our own tools to scan them. Uh, and uh, the just to give us a little bit more insight into what might be lurking within them. And secondarily, uh, if we do find security issues within them, we should contribute back to patch those uh, based off of what we find. Uh, so we're gonna, so we'll see exactly what that looks like. That's the direction of it. The other one is field enablement. That is directly related to the office hours change, uh, with the objective of trying to make the rate of ad hoc requests from sales and solution architects and professional services slow down or stop, and redirect them into an area where they can get support. Um, and that would also provide us with an opportunity to, or and I'm willing to do this. Uh, demo new features you know, provide live demos so they can see it and start asking questions and begin to understand it and have seen it worked seen it work which is a good thing as well um so anyway just want to give you a note uh, uh, in, inside of what i'm planning to write but i'm not probably not gonna be able to write them until wednesday just based upon my calendar for the next two days All right. Unless there's any questions on that, I'll hand the I'll hand the mic over to Taylor. So on the note of planning issues, we've been doing this now for quite a few releases. I personally like them. I find them very useful. Um, we're to a point where I am now far enough ahead that I actually have plans for more than one release out. So I'm to the point where I'm ready to put that somewhere, and I wanted to see would y'all prefer individual pre-opened planning issues or would we like to see that in a single issue that we split out so like one thought would be to have sort of an upcoming releases issue that we just keep going that has the next in number of releases so that you can kind of see it all on the same page and then when we finalize what we're planning for a release pull it out into its own planning issue any preferences if it was one, would that be different than the way we have upcoming releases on the handbook page? So that's part of what I'm trying to reconcile here is to figure out how to edit less things. Um, and that would kind of be my answer for linking this off the direction page would just be here's our upcoming releases issue rather than this sort of continuous 13.x issue that has to be updated monthly. Did I answer your question? Yes. Um, I don't 100% know what that would look like, but that's probably because we're trying to figure that out. Um, there is one other thing that I'm working on, which is me writing Ruby code, so be scared. Um, I'm trying to get the direction pages to do the uh, issue filtering the way it does on our release pages. Um, the Ruby code that we have that generates that is just the biggest mess you've ever seen. So I'm just trying to get it to where each individual category direction page would show upcoming issues um, rather than us having to maintain an, uh, a manual list, which is what we do today. Um, so if you're interested in learning how the handbook <laughs> works and want to help me with Ruby code, let me know.
so Taylor, how can we help with the uh, pre-planning for 14.0? So you all already started engaging in the uh, removals issue that I opened and chatted about earlier. Um, that's, I think, got good discussion on it. I think we'll finalize um, which of those things we actually want to deprecate in 14.0 and then we'll back into it. Um, Thomas and I have already started looking at some of that info. Um, in terms of this planning issue, like it would work just like any other that we've used. It'll be a proposal, sort of a work in progress, continuously updated. All right. This is totally off. Well, not off topic, but will we ever have a major release that will coincide with April Fool's Day? Because it'd be really funny to troll some some serious deprecations. <laughs> All the code in the world's secure now. <laughs> We're going to deprecate SAST. <laughs> we call that an outage. An outage. <laughs> state what I've wrote because I just couldn't help myself in imagining what it might look like, but that's just the way my head works. I like the planning issues. I like them, uh, but I will say that I like the planning issues. I like the structure. I like that it's not planning out individual issues so much as identifying what our epic priorities are and that we should be able to respond according to that. Um, it gives, it, it, provide structure, which would otherwise be missed. Yeah, I, I've i really enjoyed seeing the high level themes. So I, I don't know what kind of work that entails for you to do, Taylor, but that, that has been really enjoyable and useful for me to be able to see. Yeah, I, I, I guess the only issue, I, I, I completely agree with that. The only um, issue that I'm unsure about that maybe Thomas is, proposal covers is I like seeing per release, but understanding what long-term themes are and then having some visibility into like what, how that, if we're looking at some like custom rule sets, how that would be built out over several releases. And maybe that's just looking through the um, more feature-based epics. Okay, this is helpful. Um, I will put something together and if y'all hate it, let me know. <laughs> I don't think anybody's shy here with feedback. All right. <laughs> All right. Anything else from folks before demos? Zach, the floor is yours, sir. Cool. Um, I will share my screen then. Um, or I guess I'll, I'll first kind of give the uh, motivation for this. Um, so I think it was Thursday. I was working with Daniel, um, and there was a discussion on, well, how do we test like a local version of changes you no. put into common? No. Um, and I think this was specifically for the disablement of, of rule sets. Um, so um, this is something that I've had to Google three times and, you know, by the rule of three, this should probably be documented or automated somewhere. So um, I put an MR into common just for the readme um, so folks don't have to Google um, and figure out how to do it themselves. Um, but anyway, I will share my screen and uh, do the demo. So um, let's see. Uh, I have the Node.js scan analyzed right here. Um, and right now it's using locally uh, version 2.19 of common. Um, but, you know, what happens when we want to have like point to our local version of common? How do you do that? Well, luckily go mod supplies a replace um, keyword that you can use. So you can say, okay, I want this dependency 
to be loaded from this path. And so this is where I have common loaded from. Um, so if we just save this and then, uh, uh, let's see, I think go install. So it, it does need to, um, actually, I don't know if you even need to go install or like build. Um, I think it should automatically point to the correct thing. But anyway, so, um, right. I'll show you the, the, the local change that I have in my version of common. So in this second shell right here, um, uh, do get diff port go. Um, so I just added real simple, a new field to the report struct. Um, and we want to see that reflected in uh, the code that we uh, are using for Node.js scan. So um, easy way to do this, just look at the convert file, go to the definition of new report, uh, follow it through to report and boom, we see new field, um, which is what we added. So, um, and we can also verify this by looking at the path. So we can see it's loaded from our local um, path to common. Um, now, I guess I should also kind of uh, show what this would look like just regularly. So comment that back out. Um, let's see if we don't even need to go install. So go back to convert, um, report. Okay, so yeah, you see right here, it's it's loaded from where Go modules uh, import their dependencies. So this is what we would expect. So this does not, if we go to report, definition of report, this does not have the new field. So verifying that works. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's that. Um, that's using the replace keyword. Um, there's also something else that you can do, um, which is useful. So um, say you're reviewing an MR um, and you want to, uh, you're reviewing an MR to a dependency like common that you want to test, um, like locally, right? Um, instead of like having to, you know, pull down um, that, uh, that commit, what you can do is you can just, again, in the go mod file, update, um, this line where it says require, so you can actually specify a commit. So, for example, um, let's see, I think I was looking at this one. So, Lucas open an MR, um, and if we want to test out this commit, we can copy the SHA and just paste it right there. So, you'll notice this is invalid, right? Um, we're getting a warning here. Um, it's saying this is the wrong syntax, but if we, uh, let's see, put out and do go mod ID, and then look at it again, we'll see that this formats it to a friendly, um, I guess, uh, version that that go mod can uh, read. So what this does is uh, it, it formats, I guess, the what this does go go mod, it, it, it figures out what the latest version what the latest tag version from that commit that we pasted in is, and then it will um, format it with a timestamp. So you'll, you'll notice that this part right here, that is a timestamp that's 2020, 06. That's the time of the commit. And then this is the 12 character uh, commit SHA. So it's not the full commit SHA. So there is a specific syntax, which I tried doing my own and um, that did not, you know, that's time consuming. So you can just copy the commit SHA and then go mod tidy and boom, you have the changes remotely, uh, or the changes from remote loaded 
locally where, you know, go mod handles all that basically. So um, all that to say, you know, when you're developing, we pretty much, you know, we would be able to see this log.debug change using this. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the demo. Um, I know this is something that I've had to do. Um, and I figured probably others uh, will have to do this. Um, and I didn't see it documented anywhere. So um, that's why I created the MR and demoed it. So any, any questions? Yeah, I, I had one question on this. Um, so this is super useful and I can never ever remember how replace works. So thank you so much for <laughs> showing that and writing that down. Um, at, how, how does this affect uh, our workflow with like multi-stage uh, Docker builds? Um, I, I was just talking with Daniel the other day about um, it's, it gets kind of awkward having to do like a volume mount to use a replace directive. Yeah. Have you had any strategies or success there? So <laughs> my strategy is uh, for local development, I don't, I don't use Docker. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, Daniel though has, I think he, he showed me a nice script that he has where you do have to use volume mounts. Um, so I haven't come up with any strategies really uh, to combat that. Yeah, my, my approach has been, I do have a couple of scripts, one to build and one to like run against a test project. When building, if you have that directive in there, unless you add your local common in at the correct path, it's going to fail to build. So you would have to build before adding the replace. Once once you have like a good build of like the, the image that you're using, then you can, you know, create an interactive set shell into, you know, say Bandit, for example, or Node.js scan like he, like uh, Zach had. And then as long as you also mount a volume, then you can, you know, run uh, with, capital G-L-O-S equals Linux, you know, cross compile and output an analyzer into, you know, your interactive Docker session. And then you can just run it and iterate in that way. And so I just kept that up. I didn't rebuild Docker. I just re, you know, cross compiled to Linux every so often locally, you know, switch to my Docker shell and then run it. Does that make sense? So that, that worked pretty well. Also, um, one other way that I found to point at a specific commit, you can also use go get. So go get dependency at the commit, and that'll also take care of creating that funky tag thing that Zach showed. Yeah, I guess you can do that with a replace directive too, right? Like you could have the replace directive just point at a remote commit. So it'd be a, you push from common and then use a replace on the actual analyzer to point at the remote. I don't know if there's advantages of doing that over the, over modifying it, like you're showing with just pinning to the SHA directly as a dependency. I think the difference, between, for me at least, and Zach, you can speak to this for, from your perspective. For me, the commit, pointing at a commit is like validating stuff that's already pushed up. Like, does this work with this? Or I'm trying to like now work with this newer version, et cetera, or testing, you know, reviewing an MR at a, a deeper level um, versus um, when I was having to do the replace, I was actually, um, I hadn't pushed up my commits yet for common. So I was iterating on common, but I wanted to actually test it in a concrete manner with an analyzer, if that makes sense. So those were, those were the two distinguishing factors for me. But you could also just always use replace and check it out your local version to whatever commit you're wanting to test. So probably quite a different ways to, to go about it. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to plug that we have a group for tools. Um, and since this demo sparked conversation about other tools that folks have here to help with their local development. Can we get them created as a project and uploaded there for others to use and standardize some of this stuff? Do you mean like the scripts that I'm using? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can share my scripts. <laughs> yeah. Um, where is that like GitLab org tools or is it something more secure focused? 
uh, there's a link within our um, agenda doc for this meeting. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. I'll look at yep. that and I'll try to share those scripts. Thank yeah. you. And if folks have other scripts and, and, and tools that you use, please let's uh, let's let's make sure that the, that, we're, that we're all uh, that we're helping each other here. This is great. So excellent. We have a couple of minutes left. Anything else folks want to talk about? All right. Au revoir. Farewell. Avita Zen. Goodbye. Talk to you soon. See you.